the yagya valkya upanishad presented by swayam prakash sharma we begin the upanishad with an invocation brahm is the soul of the universe that brahm is whole and complete in all respects this universe is whole and complete in all respects the soul and complete universe has emerged from that whole and complete brahm and even though this whole and complete universe has emerged from that brahm that brahm is not affected in any way that brahm is not diminished in any way and remains as before whole and complete in all respects om shanti 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 om the yagyavalkya upanishad belongs to the shukla yajurved in which the sage yagyavalkya tells the sage king janak and the sage atri all about renunciation of sanyas and the way of the sanyasi especially the paramahans in the muktika list of 108 upanishads to be studied for salvation this upanishad figures at serial number 97 in that list source material for this upload has been taken from the english translation of the upanishad by professor a a ramanathan as published by the theosophical publishing house chennai for convenience the upanishad is presented in two parts the upanishad king janak of videha respectfully approached the sage yagyavalk and requested revered sir please teach me about renunciation yagyavalk replied there are normally four ashrams or stages in a person's life first the stage of disciplined celibate studentship of brahmacharya second the stage of the householder or the grihastha third the stage of the forest dweller or the vanprastha and fourth and finally the stage of renunciation of sanyas in the normal course the stage of renunciation is the last stage and a person may renounce the worldly life after he has completed the other stages after he has completed the stage of brahmacharya after which he becomes a householder from where he becomes a forest dweller from where he renounces the world and becomes a sanyasi or a mendicant monk this is the normal course however a person can also renounce the world directly from any stage of life he can renounce from the stage of disciplined celibate studentship or brahmacharya he can renounce from the second stage of the householder or the grihastha and he can renounce from the stage of the forest dweller or vanprastha there is also a provision that a person can renounce the worldly life from that very day on which a distaste for worldly life dawns on him from the day disillusionment about worldly life dawns on him this he may do whether he has been observing the vows that are required to be observed before the stage of renunciation or whether he has not been observing them whether he has undergone the prescribed ablution or the prescribed ceremonial bath on completing the stage of discipline studentship whether he is one who has discontinued maintaining the ritual fire at the death of his wife or whether he is one who does not maintain the ritual fire such a person can still take to renunciation and become a sanyasi or mendicant monk some law givers prescribe the sacrifice called the prajapatya sacrifice of which god brahma is the presiding deity prior to a twice born or a brahmin embracing renunciation but even though this is prescribed it is not necessary for a brahmin to do so if he does not want to he may not do so but instead he shall only perform the agni sacrifice whose presiding deity is agni the god of fire since agni is the vital breath of prana 
by doing this sacrifice he helps strengthen the vital breath he helps strengthen pran after that he shall perform the tre dhatviya sacrifice whose presiding deity is the god indra by this sacrifice the three vital fluids in the body become strong like fire and these three vital fluids which become strong like fire are sattva or simon rajas or blood and tamas or the dark one then having performed the sacrifice in the prescribed manner the person shall smell the holy fire reciting the following mantra o agni o fire this vital breath is your source and since you are born at the proper time of the year you put on a fulgence knowing the atma which is your ultimate source may you merge with pran your immediate source may you increase the wealth of our transcendental knowledge reciting this mantra in this manner the person shall smell the holy fire and what does the mantra say the mantra says this vital air this pran this is the source of fire may you go to that which is your source swaha this is what the mantra says he should perform these sacrifices using the holy fire that he has procured from the house of a scholar who is well versed in the vedas and who may be living in the area performing the sacrifices he shall smell the holy fire as prescribed earlier however if he is not able to procure the ritual holy fire because there is no vedic scholar living nearby or for any other reason the person may then offer his oblations in the waters since water is presided over by all the gods he shall offer his oblations reciting i offer oblations to all the gods swaha then he should pick up a small portion of the oblation which is mixed with ghee recite the mantra of liberation which is om which represents the essence of the three vedas worshiping brahm as sat chit anand or as truth or existence knowledge and bliss and then eat that portion of the oblation since it is beneficial for him he shall then cut off his tuft of hair or chuti and his sacred thread or yagopavit reciting thrice i have renounced i have renounced i have renounced the royal sage janak accepted what yagyavalk had told him by saying indeed so it is revered yagyavalkya then the king prompted the sage atri to ask his questions atri asked yagyavalkya dear yagyavalkya as i understand it is only by wearing the sacred thread the yagopavit that a brahmin can perform rituals that being the case after he has discarded his yagopavit then how can a brahmin who no longer wear the sacred thread the yagopavit perform rituals yagivalki replied for such a person the conviction that i am the self effulgent atma this conviction alone is a sacred thread he no longer needs a physical sacred thread having previously discarded the tuft of hair and the sacred thread he shall then ceremoniously sip water thrice saying the mantra reach the ocean swaha this is the method to be adopted by the people who renounce the world then in the case of those who are entitled to renunciation and who having renounced have become mendicant monks or sanyasis they should then wear ochre colored clothes clothes they should shave off the hair from their head they should accept nothing but food and that too only enough for bare sustenance that is they should accept only that much food 
to help them keep body and soul alive they should injure no one either in thought or by words or by actions they should live austerely on arms such persons become fit for realizing brahm this is the path of the mendicant monk this is the path of the wandering sanyasi in the case of kshatriyas and others who are not entitled to renunciation they may seek liberation by the path of the brave by courting death on the battlefield or by fasting unto death as a discipline or by entering into the water to rise no more that is by taking jal samadhi or by entering into fire or by undertaking a great journey in which to collapse through exhaustion to those entitled to renunciation the way told earlier has been prescribed by the god brahma the ascetic or the sanyasi who follows this path after he has renounced the world realizes brahm thus has it been stated in the vedanta so it is revered sir appreciated the sage king janak yagi valki continued then there are the well known sages of ancient times who are called param hanses such as samvartak aruni shwetaketu durvasa ribhu nigad dattatre shuk vamdev harit and others these param hanses wore no distinguishing marks whatsoever their conduct was beyond the understanding of worldly people although they were perfectly sane they behaved as if they were bereft of their senses they were averse to others wives they were averse to the desire to stay in towns they discarded all these they discarded the threefold the bamboo staff the water vessel and the earthen plate used for meals the three items that mendicant monks or sanyasis were allowed to carry they discarded all these they discarded the ceremonial purification with water they had no use for this ritual they discarded the tuft of hair or choti they discarded the sacred thread or yagopavit both externally as well as internally they discarded all these in the waters reciting bhu swaha and discarding all these the param hans went about seeking the atma yes discarding all these the param hans went about seeking the atma this concludes the first part of the yagyavalki upanishad om shanti 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 om